and the world. In 1987, I was approached by two pioneering companies. One was uh, cable television, which was based in the UK, and the other was um, Olympus Satellite, which was European based, which meant, oh, a trip to Brussels. Now, they wanted me to produce a trial magazine type programme, because it was early days. Well, my brief was to be lightly religious, um, not churchy, definitely no Bible bashing allowed. Um, it should uh, inform, but be entertaining, be very light and bouncy and modern, uh, and if possible, contain humour. Well, the humour, <laughs> that was quickly picked up by a gentleman called Dennis Norden, uh, who worked for ITV, producing a programme called It'll Be All Right on the Night. Sure you've heard of it. De Dennis was interested in what we did and featured many of our outtakes on his programme. The title, well, I laboured over that one quite a bit. Uh, I thought, well, God is spirit. That means he's everywhere. So after a prayer, I concluded that, well, it's simple. Why not just call the programme everywhere? So I did. I hope you enjoy it. Um, listen for Gary Newman as he composed and recorded the rolling captions you will see at the beginning. My colleague Gerald Field, uh, he composed the music, sung the music, played the music uh, on the soundtrack. Oh, watch for the clever cartoons at the end. <laughs> they were done by artist, uh, the famous Tom Moss, the late Tom Moss. Very clever, very humorous. I just give a suggestion and you roll them out. Now, after you think the programme's finished, it's probably not, because there's just a few minutes of outtakes on the end. We got well known for them. So sit back, relax and enjoy it. If you do enjoy it, please subscribe and let us know what you thought. Um, all comments, I will answer, I promise you. Here it is then, everywhere. program from England. And I'm Carol Scott Lawrence. We shall be seeing music man Gerald Field singing to the happy holiday crowds in Britain's premier holiday resort, Blackpool. And if you're feeling peckish, you can join me in the Gingham kitchen and see what we Maggie's cooking in her oven today. We shall also be looking at the plight of Blackpool's single homeless. And I'll be talking to Dr. Valerie Davis, who is considered an expert on meditation. And there's a visit to Blackpool Tower Circus. We shall be meeting the world-famous ringmaster, Norman Barrett. So what are you still sitting here for? Well, where should I be? Well, you should be in Breezy Blackpool, of course. Come on, pass off. About living, not dying, about smiling, not crying. It's about living for the moment and holding on to dreams. It's about 
about holding to the hope of things unseen. Life can let you down, turn you around and upside down. It can take away your plans and leave you on the ground. It's about living, not dying, about smiling, not crying. It's about living for the moment and holding on to dreams. It's about holding to the hope of things unseen. How did that be? No. I don't know if it's an other yells are working over there. Oh, why is that? Dog sitting for my daughter. Your dog sitting? Everybody's so friendly, no matter where they come from. Everybody's so friendly. Very friendly. Uh, that's through all ages. Very commercial, very dirty. Beaches, uh, I mean, do you see that thing on Greenpeace? They were here. It's a horrible place. Well, mainly promenade out front, um, Pleasure Beach. There's nice pubs and nightclubs. I like nightclubs. We're standing outside St John's Church here in Blackpool. It's the, uh, the oldest church in Blackpool. Do you go to church at all? Yes. I go. I go to, uh, at the moment, I'm going to the Sacred Heart down uh, Catholic Church. Uh -huh. Do you think uh, a lot of people tend to go to church when they're on holiday rather than not? Well, I'll tell you now, I notice, mostly I notice Scotch people are very good and Irish people. Do you go to church at all? Yes. Yeah. Do you go when you're on holiday? Not being well with me. No, not being well with me. Do you go to church at all when you're on holiday? No. Don't go to church at all. No. no. Never. For many people, black for me, fun, happiness and lovely memories. That's why they come here. But for some, the dream turns sour. People like Adrian, attracted by the glamour of this resort, but who instead find themselves homeless. You can see him walking through the park. See him walking on till dark. See him in your streets and alleyways. He is friendless. He's all alone, there is no place he can call his home. He remembers when it wasn't that way. He had a job, friends and a home, a private space to call his own. Now all that's left to him are memories and dreams. Can you dare to? Be a friend to the friendless Can you help provide a home For the homeless Vincent House sits in the middle of a Blackpool housing estate and has offered refuge to over 400 people in the three years it has been open. Some will stay for just a few weeks before moving on. Others stay for much longer periods. Many of these single, homeless people have come to Blackpool thinking it's a gold mine. As soon as they realize it's not, the first thing they want to do is get back home. But they often find themselves stranded with no money left. Well, I'm trying to get in the Navy. Mm. I'm trying. I tried once last year and I failed on two marks. I'm a qualified waiter. I've done two year college course. That's what I come out for, really. And I kind of, it was, it's just like seaside towns, summer season work, isn't it? So. Four jobs, two on farms, two with RSPCA. Not with it. I've got me redundant. It's a good place. It's yeah. a good place if you can't find accommodation for yourself. Yeah. If you come to a new town and there's a place like this in that new town and you don't know anywhere where you can go and find accommodation, this place is sort of, you know, it'll help you out whatever trouble you're in. 
Vincent House provides care, security, and through counselling, the chance to start again, to try and pick up the pieces, a time to think and reflect on the past, but most of all, a time to plan for the future. Now then, Maggie, what are you going to teach me to make today? Baptist tarts. <laughs> Baptist tarts. What do we need to make a Baptist tart? Some short crust pastry, a quarter pound of minced steak, some seasoning, salt and pepper, a teaspoonful of flour, and a teaspoonful of gravy powder, a tablespoonful of grated onion, and a drop of water. OK, Margaret, that's the ingredients. Now, what's the action? Line the patty tins with the pastry. And then put a spoonful of mincemeat in each one. That smells gorgeous. It's ready cooked mm -hmm. because it, it's got to go cool before it's put on the pastry. So it's cold. you're putting in cold mincemeat there? Well, coolish. Coolish. Mm -hmm. It hasn't to be hot, otherwise it makes the pastry Wet. Uh, how many uh, tarts would uh, the ingredients make? About 12. 12? Yes. You cover each one with mm -hmm. the mashed potato. Uh, hot mashed potato or uh, cool? Yes, or? hot. It doesn't matter. It's just the meat that you haven't to uh, have hot. Then mm -hmm. you just make sure you cover all the mince, do you? Yes. This is a nice, easy recipe, Margaret. I think I could even do this one. Probably you could. Right. Make sure that's... You've got to fork, flatten it all fork down. Fork it over. Why, why do you have to fork it over? Well, it looks better. Oh. And it grill, it uh, heats better. Uh -huh. Right. Aggie, lots of people are going to say, this is shepherd's pie. What's the difference? Well, shepherd's pie hasn't got a pastry bottom. Cheeky monkey. <laughs> all right, all right. OK, what do we do now? Into the oven they go to make them crisp and golden. Ooh, that sounds really nice. And how long have they got to stay in there for, Margaret? About 20 to 25 minutes on regular 7 or 425 Fahrenheit. T 25 minutes? I'm starving. I can't wait that long. <laughs> You don't have to. Here is some I made earlier. Oh, at last. I'll just try one of these, Margaret. Mmm. Margaret. They are delicious. Mmm. You don't need to make a tray full. One big tart can be just as tasty. Really? Cheeky monkey. I can't wait to see what you're going to make next week, Margaret. Next week, I'm going to make a Methodist cut and come again cake. If it's as tasty as this month's recipe, Margaret, I'll definitely come again. <laughs> Thank you, Monty. Splendid red coat and a top hat and being a master of ceremonies, what else does a ringmaster have to do? It's a very responsible job. I'm responsible for everything that goes on in the ring. I assist the producer at the start of the season. Show business people are often thought to be an immoral lot. Have you found this in the circus world? Ah, well, you see, the circus people are possibly the most genuine of all show business people. If you have, make a friend of circus people, you, you have a friend for life. Very, very genuine. And 
you don't get a lot of superstars in our business because everybody relies on everybody else to help them or whatever and there's no star act in the set. We are each indi individual act is a star. From where do you draw your own moral values? I believe in God. I have great faith in God. I and many, many other circus performers say our prayers at night and in the morning before we go into the ring. The wild animal trainer, I see him stands in a corner and he has a few words, but then I too am always the last out of the dressing room. I hate anybody to be in the dressing room after I leave it because I want at least two minutes on my own to say just a few words, which guides me, helps me, steers me through my afternoon performance or evening performance. So you'd say you're a Christian? Oh, yes. Do you think there are disadvantages to being a Christian in show business? At all. Not at all. You see, I work with people who come from all the countries of the world, all over the world. We speak many, many different languages. We may be different colours, but we are all bonded together by a 42 feet diameter circus ring. That is our common denominator. And it doesn't matter what nationality you are, what politics you are, what religion. We are bonded together by this. And this is a very important thing. And we, are, we live like a family. We live very closely together. The Chinese, when they arrived this year, were a little bit apprehensive. A lot of them hadn't been out of China or into England before. Now they've kind of know what type of people we are. And we're, all in, we're all a group. We're all like that together. And there's no such thing as... Uh, He's a, an artist and he's a ring boy and I'm the ring boss. We all work together as a team. And um, deep down when you get to some of these kind of, a, the younger lads who work in the ring and who work so hard, um, they're Christians deep down as well. They've got something they might put on a very hard front. But when you get inside them, they're Christians. It is the opinion of many researchers that stress is the root of all disease. There are many ways to combat stress, but your preference is for transcendental meditation. That's right. Why is that? Primarily because it works. And it works quickly. And the overall effects of TM are just lovely in the person. Uh, not only does it help in specific ways, but it enhances one's sense of well-being and one's harmony with oneself and with uh, you know, one's environment and, and other people generally. So it is, it is lovely. After one has meditated then, what, uh, what sort of feelings does one have? A feeling of great calm and of restoration. Restoration. It, it's like having one's batteries recharged. And that's really lovely at the, uh, one does it twice a day, in the morning and in the evening. And at the end of one's day, um, everyone's feeling a little tired, a little jaded. And one sits down and, and one does this for 20 minutes and, and it's just beautiful. So that you really feel as though you've had a long, deep rest. Some people would say that they have 40 winks in the afternoon. And that is just a good example. Well, not many of us have the... Uh, ability to go to bed for 40 weeks in the afternoon. I'm sure that's very restorative too. But in fact, TM has been shown to bring greater rest than in deep sleep. And one measures that by looking at the amount of oxygen that we use. Um, and when we meditate, the amount of oxygen we use is much reduced than when we're sleeping. And it's reduced more quickly. So obviously the body is becoming very, very rested much more quickly. And just 20 minutes meditation is equivalent, really, to the amount of rest we have to a lot longer sleep than 40 minutes. Uh, some people might be concerned that transcendental meditation is opening the mind to occult powers. What would you say in defense of that? I think that you can see that um, far from being a, an evil thing, people become very much more in harmony with, with themselves uh, with their God and with their environment and this has got to be a good thing. People become more loving and more understanding. Uh, the, the, the positive sides of one's uh, nature are enhanced. Now another aspect to transcendental meditation is this flying. Could you, could you expand on that a bit for us? 
Well, I think that's something that really does rivet some people and turn a lot of people off, thinking, well, that's, they're just crazy. Um, we don't fly. We do something that you might call more like hopping. There is an advanced form of, of meditation, of TM, and one of the techniques involves using a certain mental technique akin to the one that we use in TM. And the result of that is that the body moves from one position to another. Now that may sound bizarre. It does, it, it, is, it is in a way bizarre. Um, it's very, very amusing. When one learns to do it, it's, it's just hysterically funny. And one can't really believe that it happens, but it does happen. What is happening in that advanced technique is that the coherence of both sides of the brains is increased. And this is a little side effect, if you like. One has the wish, and that wish is translated into action. We have much greater ability than we are aware. There's very little doubt about that. And when one has this great quietness and extra coherence, both, side, both sides of the brain, and one has the wish for this to happen, then it happens. And it's not flying. This is the very, very early stages of uh, levitating. But as far as I know, nobody is actually levitating at the moment. Could you teach me how to fly? <laughs> Could you teach me how to fly? No, I'm I'm not a teacher. You need a trained teacher to teach you to meditate. It's a little bit like driving a car. You might think, oh, I could learn that from a manual, but really, you need to be at the, at the controls. And this is something that you experience, so you do need a teacher. What she would do is to ask you to sit quietly, close your hands, and just practice the little mental technique that she would give you. And immediately, you would start reaping the benefits of your meditation. Our next program comes from Royal Windsor, and besides showing you some of the sights, we shall be taking you inside Windsor Castle to hear a discussion between John White, who's Canon of Windsor, and the world-famous pop star Gary Newman. And at this very moment, we might be in a kitchen preparing the next gastronomic delight. Cheeky monkey. Not too tight, please. <laughs> How often do you have to change your shirt? Uh, um, once every five years. Mm. 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 I'm going to sleep now. I can't feel a thing. Yeah, take, take it out. My stand up will go down. Wait a minute, let me just get my skirt. <laughs> Here is some I made earlier. Hey, where have they gone? <laughs> mm. Mm. These are revolting. Do it five See you in the morning.